This song is so catchy. Welcome back. <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. Gonna read Natsuki first. Alright, Natsuki. To read your poem. Natsuki reads my poem. She keeps glancing at me at the back of the poem. But now she must have read it more than once. Aren't you supposed to be bad at this? Is that a compliment? N no, I mean, you know. Natsuki struggles to find the words she wants. I just expected a lot less after what you showed me yesterday. That's all. Well, I guess I just got lucky at this one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You just got lucky, you know? Don't get used to it. You won't always manage to write poems as cute. I mean... I mean, well written. No, I mean... Ah, so that's how it is. My poem is cute. No, why are you smiling? It's not like I like cute things. And Suki shoves my poem back towards me. Huh, reading really, really it again. I decided it's not so great after all. It's too cute and doki doki. It would only press, you know... Girls who like those kinds of things. <laughs> For some reason, Natsuki is incredibly easy to see through. Well, anyway, you're gonna read me read mine now, right? Judging by your taste, you'll probably like it a lot. Probably learn something too. Don't forget who the real pro is. Oh my God, this is long. Amy likes spiders. I don't like spiders. I don't like Amy. Anyways, Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wiggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's not- that's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singy voice. I heard her sing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy held me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if she doesn't hurt anyone. It doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world's better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. Okay, Natsuki. Okay. That's, um... Uh, not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. That's supposed to be her and talking, not me. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can't ex can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. It helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course, it's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It could be about anything. I wrote it to be easily relate to. I wrote it to be easy to relate to, yeah. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid people will find out and make fun of you. Or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes, as long as they're not hurting anyone and, what, and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. I'm sure a lot of people can, can too. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless it's good message to take away from it. Like, conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow, too, so look forward to it. Okay. My buddy. <laughs> Sayori. Ooh, I like this one red. It has some nice feelings in it. Ah, I'm glad. Still, though, your tone makes it sound like you like yesterday's poem better. <laughs> I guess you got me. Sometimes you know me a little too well for my own good. But I'll just try to be nice about it. If I'm doing a bad job, I'd rather just hear it. No, no. I still like this one, I promise. You know, I would, wouldn't lie to you, Fred. Never ever. Yeah, I guess so. What made yesterday's poem so great compared to this one, then? Um, well, I'm not really good at figuring out... Uh, well, I'm not really good, very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. That's why I just go by my heart. It makes you feel things that must be a good poem. Not sure that's exactly how it works. But again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of the whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you'd like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. Ugh, why don't you at least try giving me giving it some thought? Aw, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you always think about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep that in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. 
Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give the rain cloud a hug and make a nice happy rainbow. Sorry, that's unexpectedly poetic. Yeah, it is? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Fred. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Okay, bottles. I don't remember this. I pop off my s oh, okay, it's a bot it's from the perspective of a bottle. I think. I pop off my scalp like a lid of cookie jar. It's a secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine rubbing all together like bundles of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. But there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in a bottle all in a row. My collection scroll down. makes me lots of friends. Each bottle is a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend's friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper, my fingers go. Exploring like a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked door, front door. Finally all done, I open up and in come my friends. In they come, in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after another, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. And every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They're supposed to be for my friends, my friends who weren't smiling. They all shout, pleading something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Oh my god, this is so beautiful and depressing and oh my god. <laughs> Sayori, I want to hug you. Holy crap. Sarah, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? Hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing is the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Sorry's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. <laughs> okay, um, Monica. Hi again, Fred. How's the writing going? All right, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going, as long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. Wait, didn't she just say I'll take that? I <laughs> give my poem to Monica. <laughs> Alright, I like it, Fred. Really? It's a lot cuter than I expected. <laughs> oh, jeez. No, no, it's kind of makes me think of something that Natsuki would write. She's a good writer, too. So I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> if you say so. Yep. By any chance, have you read anything by Shell Silverstein? Uh, maybe a long time ago. These stories are telling all kinds of stories in just a few simple words. These poems can be funny, endearing, or even sad. Sometimes they're only a few lines long. They might even feel like they're written for kids, but if you think about them, they give big expressive views of the world that would probably apply to anybody. I'm having trouble reading you, Monica, I'm sorry. I see. So you're saying that Tsugi is kind of like that? Sort of. Maybe she's not an expert, but you probably won't find much filler in her poems. They might be easy to write, but they're super challenging to get the meaning through. So I can see why it would be... Wait, see why it would be your kind of poem to explore. But anyway, you want to hear my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. <laughs> Great. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors, flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless... Don't know the word. A meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating, waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing on a truck. Playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless pulling of meaningless. Load me. 
See, when I see that, I'm thinking of like, oh, you save a file and you load a file. That's what I'm thinking. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? Haha. <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. Sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just the kind of thing I never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of a poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes me feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling. Or a conversation with a reader. So, putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. Monica. Stop being self-aware. You never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for the day. Thanks for listening. Okay, you weirdo. Let's see what you've written for today. Hmm. Well done, Fred. Your skills are really improving, are pre improving already. What? Really? Thanks, Yuri. I thought you'd not like it from it's cute. Because it's cute. I can't even talk when I'm saying my thoughts. Oh my god. Coming from you, that means a lot. Eh? It's nothing. I'm just happy to be to help inspire fellow writers. I know you're new to this, so don't worry much if it seems like you can't get your poems to feel perfect. You don't need to be afraid of to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings. And write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly, truly enable your readers to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. That's certainly an interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that if you'd like to read it. Of course. It's a poem you wrote for today. Yuri nods and Timely hands me her poem. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as, a, as an... An ordinary human, I guess? I gave the raccoon a piece of bread. My subconscious well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the sympathy that bred my hungry curiosity. The raccoon... A what? And... in 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 I, I don't know what that says. I can't tell what letters those are, <laughs> except for the G-E. Im Im image? No. Im I don't know. The moon enticement enticements? It's... I can't tell it. I can't read script. It's phase and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. It's very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice bread fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I am merely projecting my emotions onto my new... Newly satisfied friend. Animal. Newly satisfied animal. The. I, I can't talk. Oh my god. The raccoon is taking to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic. I know the word. Pavlov. Pavlonian. Pavl. Pavl Pavlog's dog, whatever that thing is. Conditioning, I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. Okay. I know what this is about, and... Uh, um... I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's fault. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit close to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery, and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself, so I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Huh, that's funny. Didn't Natsuki also write something about that? About something being ridiculed for a strange interest? Huh? She... she did? Yeah. She was talking about how it doesn't matter if you're into it. What you're into, as long as you're not hurting anybody. She, she's right. Uh, I mean, does she really feel that way? Yeah, sounds like you do have that in common. That's, well, that's interesting. To me, she seems like the kind of person that would make fun of my hobbies. 
But I suppose it's my fault for judging, isn't it? Ah, uh, please don't tell her I said that. <laughs> don't worry, I have no reason to. Okay, well thank you for sharing with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I might be ranting a bit now. But I'm glad that you're a good listener. Okay, we're good now, right? Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned for today, so if everyone could come sit in the front of the room. Is this the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. What is that embarrassing ourselves and get, get, not getting any members? I can't read anymore, oh my god. <laughs> That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're gonna keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Siri has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets that we can give out during events. The event. Events? I don't know. I can't remember. Wow. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what exactly we're going to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry, I thought you heard about it yesterday. We're going to be performing. Performing? P um, Monica. Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Siri's putting all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sarah, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't... You didn't already start putting these posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't set up for this, you know? There's no way I'm going to perform in front of people like that. I agree with Natsuki. I could never, in my life, do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys... No, Sayori, I understand where they're coming from. Remember, Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room of full people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So, I'm sorry. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the ones- we're the ones- la 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 la, I cannot talk. We're the whole ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start at the event and each put a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. You're gonna poke her in the eye. What are you doing? <laughs> I glanced up. And the more people we, who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is about. Yeah! It's all about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others to inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if it takes standing in front of a room full front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem. Two minutes? Jeez. I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayuri looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayuri and Monica have been trying really hard to get me new members. New members? I can talk. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... Looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Ugh. Okay, fine. I can't have to go- I can't talk. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying to rush through it and I shouldn't- I guess I'll just leave- I'll just have to get over with it. Get it over with. Alright! <sighs> Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly- dejectedly- dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. <sighs> I guess I don't really have a choice. Haha, <laughs> that's everyone! You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice re reciting them in front of each other. N no way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of the strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a bit more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to a specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands at the podium. Po podium, sorry. I don't remember this. <laughs> this title of this poem is The Way They Fly. <clears throat> Monica be begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply the motion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Well, she wrote the poem, so yeah. Is this something she's done before, or is it simply natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sari looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. What happened to Natsuki? What is her expression? The four of us applaud. That's not how you do- you snap! You snap for poems. You don't applaud. 
Uh, Monica takes a breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica. Ah, thank you so much. Thank you very much, not that I can't read. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? I'll go next. What? Yuri's all fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of, pa sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Sayori. Yuri. It, it's called... After Image of a Crimson Eye. I don't remember this. <laughs> did I skip this video somehow? <laughs> I mean, the video of Mark Black did it. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets so absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns and structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. Must be a rare glimpse to the whirlwind fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. <laughs> Suddenly she's finished. Everyone is stumped. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as, just, as if she bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first one to start applying and the cat wants to come in the room. Oh my god, cat, stop clawing at the door. <laughs> Everyone joins me afterwards and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were so caught off guard we might have forgotten. Must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back to her seat. <laughs> Noom! <laughs> Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. So Yuri hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I giggled. <laughs> sorry. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do this so easily? Ah, try to think of it as you're reciting to other people. Imagine you were setting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror, or in your own head. It's your own- it's your poem, so it'll come out the- out the- the- the-, the it'll come out the best that way. I made her sound like Carmen for a second there. I see, I see. Okay then. Sarah begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read the poem on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it, but hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Siri meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone than I thought I thought I knew through and through. Siri finishes and we applaud. I did it. Good job, Sayori. Yeah, <laughs> even Fred liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nice, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you in fits you nicely. But I might not might bleh, can't. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with the, that kind of delivery. Eh? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more fierce behind them, depending on what you're reading. Force, not fierce. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. <laughs> Next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time for the festival, you know? Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki. Hm. Don't make me go for Fred. It's not like I compare to you guys anyways. Might as well let Fred lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Oh, come on! <laughs> Don't be picking on Fred. Natsuki! It's fine, it's fine. Might as well get it over with. It's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. <laughs> Stand. <laughs> Crimson, poof, something. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. So I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Into it. Despite that, once I finished, I received applause anyways. Applause anyways. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat, makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. <laughs> anyway, the poem is called Jump. Tsuki takes a breath. When she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down as if giving life to the poem. It's called Jump. Actually, look, pause. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Ah, uh, well, do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it for other people would be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But it's just my friends. It's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Masuki. 
I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez, I should probably find another poem to recite instead. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pres- I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. Makes me- uh, you're, you're kinda half screen. Your hair is gonna smack her in the face! First the poking, that smacking hair. Makes me really happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival's coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'll have to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. Alright. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Surya and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. It's for the sake of the club. And I'm pressing Monica, and I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. I missed their voices together. Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys, don't make it such a big deal out of it. It must be nice, though. A little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Fred, you don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, and a lot of things have been ha already changed. But today, Sayori's a little quieter than, than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was pacing out. <laughs> no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I mean, Sayori fumbles with the words. So, let's just say that one day Natsuki asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You kind of put me on the spot here. Da, 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 da. <laughs> no one got that joke. <laughs> I would still walk home with you, you crazy lady. Sayori, you really think I would ditch you for Natsuki? Eh? But, but she's so cute and fun to be around. Jeez. I already seen her at the club every day. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, Fred. You think about me way too much sometimes. That's, there's no way there. But Suki would deserve it if she wanted, so... Sorry, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure her out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point of speculating something that's never gonna happen? Hmm. The conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Sayori to care so much about. But I want to respect and keep her happy, too. Then again, the festival's only a few days away. Who knows what'll happen in that time. Do I get to pick a poem? Okay, how much time do I got? Yeah, I might have to do the next one. Okay, I'm gonna save. Only save twice. Wow, oh, okay. What was the first word? First word's gonna be empty. <laughs> Alright, so thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this. It's not creepy yet. Uh, and I'm keeping episodes under half an hour for now. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see more. And I'll see you guys in the next one.